So what I want to talk about is music, bro, because <clears throat> for a long time, I've been like thinking about the music that I've listened to, make all that, just consume and everything. And like, I fell off and on of this, like sometimes I'll fall off of it and I'll just listen to whatever. And then I'll realize that like the things I listen to have power over me and my spirit and my soul and my conscience and my direction and the things that I normalize and the things I do and the things I don't do and the things I act on and the things I don't act on and just the it's very it's deep and I didn't you know I realized it again and I was like I literally deleted my entire Spotify I deleted all my music and I started over because there was just I had like 2,000 songs liked on Spotify and I was like okay I've come to this realization that I can't just be listening to anything, but like, I'm not about to go sort through 2,000 and something different songs and be like, this is good, this is not good. I was like, look, I'm gonna just delete all my things and whatever is really for my soul, I'm gonna remember it. So lo and behold, all the songs that I remember and that were actually good for me and everything, like I remember them and all the trash stayed in the trash, you feel me? So basically, I'm not here to tell y'all, don't do this, don't do that. I'm just telling y'all from my experience, bro, I can't just be listening to anything and everything because like I don't want to normalize killing other black people I don't want to normalize being a hoe and all this if that's you I'm not even gonna say that's cool because it's not but if that's you I would just say just not even like I'm not even here to judge you nothing just like really think about the stuff that you say and do and like we're all spiritual beings bro so don't sit up here and act like the stuff you do don't matter and the stuff that I do doesn't have energy and like you feel me like it's, it's, it's not even just music, it's in general. Like, I know I have energy and I have the power to make something dark or light, and we all do. So this, I can't, I'm not trying to really judge nobody because I don't want to be judged. And I feel like we're all, we're both humans on the same level, but it's like, for me personally, and the people that are like this with me, you feel me? Like, we're all on that vibration. So I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I do. But yeah, bro, yeah. I literally like stopped listening to a lot of stuff like, I was talking about it today in class. Someone brought it up and I was like, dang, I really got to speak about it because this woman in my African-American studies class brought it up. She was like, yeah, like now I'm really like, I'm really coherent on what I'm listening to. And I just can't be listening to everything. Like I got sons. I'm not going to be listening to songs that talk about killing other black people. Like she was like, I got two kids, two boys. I can't be listening to music that's glorifying and killing other black, other black men. When I got two black little boys, you feel me? Like I was like, damn. That really hit me. And then my professor felt it. We were all in the class like, mm-hmm. And my professor was talking about how it infiltrates you spiritually and how social media even and consuming the wrong stuff will take you down. And yeah, we went off. So it compelled me to get on here and really speak my truth because I've been meaning to make this video for a long time and I just haven't. But yeah, the person in class and someone commented, they were like, oh, you mean music, music like Sexy Red? And I was like, I literally typed da da da. I was like, bruh, tell me why I had to stop listening to Sexy freaking Red, bro. I freaking love Sexy Red. I still fuck with her. Like, I guess the movement, she's a black woman coming up. But the delivery could be better. But then again, I'm not here to judge. It just don't align with me. And it's like, oh, bro, this is, is it deep. Because, okay, say you were you reciting a lyric where it's like, yeah, fuck that nigga. I'm finna cheat on my bitch or some shit. You saying that over and over and over is making your, is letting your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind, and your conscious mind know that you cool with cheating on your bitch. You feel me? Like, when I was my most ruthless, bro, didn't give a fuck about nobody, was a cheater, was all this, the music I listened to was not chill. Let's just say that. It was literally on some taking nigga bitch shit, like, and that's what I would go do. Because it was like, yeah, I'm finna take a nigga bitch because uh, cause Lil Uzi said it, like, tight shit. Oh, Shoreline said it, so I'm finna... Oh, Chike said it. Bro, the music I used to listen to was ungodly, bro. But that was for that time. And I grew, so I'm not even here to bash me or nothing like that. But just looking back, I'd be like, I would wake up at 7 a.m. and bump this shit. Like, what the fuck? And listen to it all day. And you can't tell me that over on repeat, I know all the lyrics. That's not affecting my soul, my spirit, and my actions. It is. Like, it is. It is. So, yeah, bro. And also, 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 also. I'm not going to leave us hanging. I'm going to give... Y'all see my chest chesting? Yeah, but I'm not going to leave y'all hanging. I'm going to suggest some fire songs. Okay? I'm going to suggest some fire music so we can play it and all be high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Okay. But I'm trying to think of anything else I want to say regarding this topic because... 
it's deep. It's it's deep. But I think I got my point across, y'all. Like we can't just be listening to anything and everything. Like we can't. You know, like we we can't. I mean, you can, but we shouldn't. Especially y'all, man. My team, the ones who watch me, my supporters. Um, we we're on this journey together. You feel me? Like you watch my videos. You feel me? Like we're communicating without really communicating. And then y'all be commenting though, and y'all follow me on Instagram. You DM me. So we're we're uh, sharing we're sharing conversation here and there. You know, we're in the loop a little bit. So. I want y'all to boss up. You feel me? Like, it's not no, you shouldn't listen to this. Oh, yeah, you're dumb if you listen to this. No, it's not about that. It's about just listen. Like, really, I want you to really reflect on what you do. Like, you feel me? Awesome loving shit, bro. Like, bro, bring it in, bro. Fuck with you, bro. Like, here, bro. You feel me? Like, you feel me, bro? You feel me? Like, it's all love, bro. Like, it's not, I'm not trying to, you feel me, make nobody feel like shit. And I want to point something out as well, too. To everyone that comments on my videos with thinking, I understand, you think you're trying to help me and benefit me, but the, your delivery is just very hostile and it's not, the result you want is not going to come from the way that you sent it at me. You feel me? Like, if you really want me to think about something, you got to come at me in a respectful way. Like, you see how I have, I brought them, I brought a fact to the table then I brought you a why you shouldn't do this. And then I even said, but it's all love. Like, I actually love you. Not no fake, oh, you know, I, I fuck with trans people, but why are you trans? Like, no, don't. Like, like you know, like, if it, if it comes from the heart, you could tell. Like, I hope y'all could tell it's come from my heart. But, like, the people that comment on my videos, I understand it's coming from a good place because that, that's all you know and that's what you've experienced. So you're just trying to tell me based on your experience that my life is going to end up that way. But first of all, you... You don't know me or my life. I don't know you or your life. So instead of trying to tell other people what to do, we can like actually have a conversation about it. And you know, you tell me your why, and I'll tell you my why. And and we'll actually have a in, an integrational conversation where we're both being heard. We're not trying to prove our point and try to shut you down. We're just genuinely listening. You know, I think that would be very like progressive and beneficial to everyone because. You know, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life and I don't need you to tell me how to live my life. And I don't want to, that's why in these videos where you feel me, I think I'd be saying something where I'm like, you know, just check the music you listen to. I try to preface now, if you watch most of my videos, I, I try to say that I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I've done. If it resonates with you, do it. But I'm not telling you to go delete all your Spotify right now. You need to delete your Spotify if you want to, if you want to thrive. Like, no, because we all have free will. I can't control anyone, but I can give some suggestions. Like I said, if they resonate, you'll do them. I don't even have to press you because you're gonna want to do it on your own. You see what I'm saying? If you commented something, you were trying to genuinely help me, and I and it was very sweet from the heart. I was like, okay, I see your perspective. If it resonates with me, I would do it. But you telling me you need to be a woman and accept and accept uh, where you came from and accept how God created you. That's not gonna make me go back and be a freaking woman. And it's not like I freaking left being a woman. Like, can we just clear that up? I still identify as female, bro, because I have fem like my chromosomes are female and I can't change that. No amount of testosterone can change that. And I'm not trying to change that. So like, let's just get that out of the way. I know that I have female chromosomes. I know that if I were to be, uh, what's that thing where like you not rot, but if I were like a fossil and someone found me, they would be like, this was a female. That's fine. But like my gender expression is male. You feel me? My sex is not male. I can't make my sex male. I don't want to make my sex male. I used to. I thought I thought that's what you had to do to be trans. But now I'm like, dude, I'm. this is me, bro. Like, uh, yes. And I look, I know a lot of people love to say, when did you figure out you were in the wrong body? I'm not in the wrong body. Let's just clear that up. Trans people are not in the wrong body. I don't like that language, and I think that it makes people think that we're like delusional, and that we just came across this idea that we should switch genders. And I don't like that. I don't like the. I don't like the wording. I don't like the phrasing. I don't like the verbiage. I don't like it. You know, I'm not in the wrong body. I'm in the right body. I know I'm in the right body. If I was in the wrong body, that doesn't even make sense because I'm here for a reason. Everything in my life is right. You feel me? Like I'm right where I'm supposed to be in the right body, all that. So I'm. Let's stop using the language that we're in the wrong body. No, we not. And then a lot of people like to act like 
in their whole life they've never made any leap of faith to level up and if you haven't that says a lot but we, we act like we haven't went to the gym to level up we act like we haven't started reading books to level up we act like we haven't went to school to level up we act like we haven't something we're on a walk every day to level up we act like we don't do things every single day of our life if we're actually on our on our purpose to level up so why is it that when a trans person like me decides to get top surgery because to me that's leveling up it's oh you don't like yourself you're all this it's not even about that bro we all tweak ourselves to upgrade you feel me you went to the gym and started working out because not because you hated yourself but you were like hmm maybe if i didn't have these loan house i would be even hotter like that's why i you feel me it doesn't even have to be that but you feel what i'm saying it's like it's i literally got top surgery because like if i don't have these titties bro I'm gonna be on 20, like 20 times fire. Like I'm, I'll be so much more comfortable on myself. I'm gonna just, yeah, all that. Like my confidence and my my appearance, my my attraction level was gonna go up because I'm more confident in myself. Now you go to the gym, you you don't feel me. You got your body right. You feel more confident. Same thing with trans people, bro. I got on testosterone because I was like, bro, I'm cool right now. But if I was on T, I it would be up. Like I'm lit. Like it's everything I ever wanted. You feel me? It doesn't have to be an act of like self-hatred. It could be an act of self-love. You're transitioning because you love yourself. You're not transitioning because you hate yourself. I didn't transition because I hate myself. I transitioned because I love myself enough that I wanted to live and actually live a, a, a happy and joyful life that I had to make that change for myself in order to get that result. You feel me? Like I could have stayed off T. Could I could have not transitioned. And I wouldn't be leveling up. Why would I stay stagnant if I know in my freaking spirit, mind, soul, everything, my whole entire being, that my next move is transitioning? People be trying to discredit trans people as if we don't know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. We so locked in with our spirit that we can literally make a huge step to transition socially, physically, medically, and we're so sure. But people like to play it off as you don't know what you're doing. And then this whole debate around children. First of all, who is doing surgery on 12-year-old kids? If you're actually doing surgery as a surgeon on a 12-year-old kid, a reconstructive uh, gender uh, uh, surgery, you are you shouldn't even be in practice. Like, it's not happening. And if it is, it shouldn't be. Like, that's, that's illegal. It's not. I don't condone that as a trans person. No adult or even person in the right mind would condone that so it's like that can't be keep being the argument of trying to deter people and tell kids that you're not trans bro kids can be trans when i was if i was 12 and i knew i was trans i wouldn't want to jump and go get a surgery i don't even have titties at 12 bro like and if you do they're min they're minuscule the next step at this point in time is just to go on puberty blocker so if you were 12 and you found out you're trans and you wanted to you know you're like hmm, i don't know what i want to do right now but i know i'm not a girl i'm a boy okay at that age i would have just went on puberty blockers if i was allowed to with my parents puberty blockers you feel me like it doesn't do anything to me besides stop my puberty from happening so i have time to actually think about what i want to do like I don't, there's just this is like misinformation and wrong narrative around being trans and it's like oh my gosh dude like i'm not mad at anyone but it's like it needs to be said and also bro like trans people <laughs> trans people bro trans people like me trans people like you trans people like people all around the world <sighs> i'm gonna say this let me catch a breath okay honestly i forgot what i was saying but i was going off but yeah dude like what more can I say, man? Like, just respect trans people, bro. Love trans people, bro. Like, we're equal to you. You feel me? We know what we're doing. We, we're not here to hurt anyone. We're not here to attack children. We're not here to persuade people. Like, I was once a child and look at me. You feel me? Like, let that sink in. I was once a child. I've made this decision. Look at me. I'm fine. You know? And 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 regarding this whole thing of children being trans and all this, like I was I wanted to be on T so bad and I couldn't because I had to be 18 because my parents didn't let me. Like I couldn't even do anything until I was 18. I don't know why this narrative that kids are being just allowed to walk into a doctor and get like 
surgery testosterone like that doesn't happen bro i literally have to go through therapist after therapist after therapist letter after letter to get what i wanted to get and it took so much time i used to get aggravated because i was like dang bro i wish i was on t already i was in my senior year in high school at 17 i literally tasted the testosterone but my therapist it just kept lagging and it wasn't as fast as i wanted it to be you feel me like and i'm grateful that i, I had a lot of time because I, I really started uh, transitioning um when i was like junior year damn junior year that's crazy. I don't even think I've talked about this, but damn, I was brave as hell, bro. Junior year of high school, I just came out as tramp. Like everyone knew me as a girl, my birth name, my girl name. I mean, that's how they knew me from freshman year. I lived, oh my God, I went to high school freshman year, sophomore year, and junior year as a freaking girl. Like people don't get that, bro. Like I've literally been perceived as both it's that's why i think being male to me now is like just so weird and i mean weird because it's like i transitioned and i was so used until i was 17 i was so used to just being perceived as a female and being treated as one until i was 17 i'm only 23 i've only been living my life as a male for five years but i've been female a girl my birth name for 17 years like I say that it's so weird being male because people just see you different, man. Like, not only society, but seeing myself different, my family, everyone. Like, society now, I'm a black male. Like, I don't know if y'all are catching on what I'm saying. Like, black men are seen as a threat um, since the 1800s and before. Black men are the ones that are going to come steal your wives. And we're so aggressive and we're so raw. We're like, you know what I'm feeling? We've been painted as that. So now that's me. And it's like, whoa. And it's, it's it's just crazy how you get perceived so differently if you're a male or a female. Like, gender expression-wise, if I'm presenting mostly mask as a man, a monster, it's so different than not being that and being feminine. Like, I'd say it's different just how, like, one thing that I notice a lot, and I'm still getting used to it, is... As a female, greetings wouldn't, I wouldn't even think twice about how I'm gonna greet someone when I meet them. I would just hug them because guys hug girls, girls hug girls. You know, like your Theo, he hugs, you know, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, miha. Like, you feel me? Like, it's a hug. But if you're a dude, now it becomes, oh, the hug is the, the weird part for a lot of guys. When, when I go to hug a guy, it's like, unless we establish that it's cool, but like normally, hugging guys is like not socially accepted. In certain in certain areas you feel me especially with older men different generation it's just like why are you hugging me at the freaking barbecue <laughs> like but they'll do it but it's not as you feel me but I, i'm kind of breaking out of that but i mean it is in like now right my greeting is like a dap up and i didn't know the handshake for so long and i made a video a long time ago just like i had a really hard time making friends with men and I'm giving myself grace because now, now that I'm speaking about it, I really understand why and everything. But yeah, like going from hugs to handshakes and being perceived as a guy. So now guys are like, oh, it's another guy. So they talk to you like you're just another guy. And I usually didn't get that. I would all the girls would talk to me because I was a girl. And like I was like, oh, hey, you know what I mean? Like I would have guy friends, but you feel what I'm saying, especially in like high school. A lot of my friends were girls. I was, on, I was on a girls basketball team. Like I would just conversate with girls more. I had more girls around me. Um, it's not even a thing of like machisto shit. Like, oh yeah, I got girls around me. It's literally just because I was a girl and that's who I felt comfortable conversating with and having as friends and, you know, around me like that. So I'm still new to having male friends. Um, and it's not so much them. It's more me because like I said, now I have to navigate being perceived as a man you feel me like it's not that females are different than men and girls are different than women are different than men it's not even it's me and how i navigate with these groups now even women like i have to now be conscious of the fact when i make a friend that's a girl because i have to make sure because i'm in a relationship i have to make sure that are we actually friends or like does she kind of like me or you feel me or like i can't i don't want to be like come off weird because like yeah bro i remember that like i would just have to navigate differently because 
back before I could be friends with girls and they wouldn't really think anything of me because like I'm one of them I would even though I was masculine like I was like I was gay I was a stud you know family like, I was I was still dressed in like a hoodie sweatpants they would still know that I was a girl at the end of the day so then navigating that as a man like I realized oh if I say certain things I make women uncomfortable because they perceive me as a man like I can't say the things that I would normally you feel me it's just it's so nuanced and a lot of people don't talk about it but it's like that that social transition honestly was just as if not more pivotal in my life as my medical transition like actually starting tea you know and having people perceive me but it's like that was different because when i started tea everyone already knew oh this fool he's a guy he's literally about to go on tea like i'm um, they knew me as christian at that time compared to when i had to socially transition they didn't even they literally thought i was a girl and then i'm like hey i'm a dude the social transition was wild because and that really tests a lot of your friendships and your family relationships because i had to tell people that i was a man and like i really see myself as a dude like i'm a, I'm a boy i told people that when i didn't even look like a boy like, i told people that when my pro when they were still calling me she her pronouns like i told people that and there was really no proof in me but all they had was my words and then when i was on testosterone it's like oh they saw oh his voice is do you feel me like People took me more serious when I started testosterone, and I don't blame them because, especially if you never met a trans person before, and someone just that you've known as a girl, she, her, that's your girl, and and then she tells you, oh hey, my pronouns are not she, her, they're actually he, him. It's hard to just snap and be like, okay, got you, bro, you're he, him. Like they've never seen that before, so I think too it was hard for a lot of my family and friends to adapt to me because maybe they didn't take me serious and you know it's i'm not saying it's okay not to listen to someone and take them serious you should believe them when they're ex expressing something especially that personal and deep as their gender identity with you but for lack of knowledge for them because especially five years ago there wasn't that much knowledge on trans people like the whole era of trans people on youtube and in the media is literally new like youtube has been a, a safe haven for trans people we've really been i've really been seeing a lot of representation on there i've been creating representation this is where i like to create content this is where i first started getting content for me is youtube but um yeah i couldn't really blame them for not accepting me right away you know but like i said a lot of the change came when i was on testosterone it's very hard to still misgender me and not see me as me when my voice is literally like this and i have facial hair and you feel me and my, my chest looks like this and i'm like yo bro like you feel me at that point it's like they they see me you feel me they couldn't see me you know it's, it's it is what it is they couldn't see me back then before t and all that and it's cool because honestly i was just going by faith myself that's why i say trans people are so tapped in because i literally just had an idea in my head of what my life could look like and how i could be and i had to just believe it i couldn't i, I could see it in my head but I, I looked in the mirror and I didn't see that back in the mirror. I just had to be like, damn, bro, we're going to start this journey. And I don't know where we're going, but we're going. Like, you feel me? And it was really an act of faith and trusting in God and myself and everything. Because this person that you're seeing, that you guys are seeing right now in this camera, five years ago, I would have I would have chipped out if you showed me a picture of me in a video right now or something. And saying, you're going to be like this in five years. Like, what? It's kind of like, you know youtube starting a youtube channel you have zero subscribers next thing you know you have 100k you're like whoa me at zero subscribers like i knew it was possible but it's just different when you really see it like you feel me like i don't know how i'm at bro having a zero subs and then seeing you got 100k even seeing i had a thousand subscribers it's like damn like i knew i was gonna grow but i actually see it though <laughs> You feel me? I love y'all, man. And I really, like, thank y'all for the support and just rocking with me. And rocking with me, man. A lot of y'all, I know y'all probably see a lot of y'all selves in me, especially my black trans men. Um, I know y'all probably see a lot of yourselves in me because I, I see a lot of myself in y'all. You know, I follow back a lot of y'all on uh, Instagram, and I'm like, damn, like this one dude, your camera watching, what's up, camera? You, you, you lit. Um, I'll be watching his his uh, Instagram stories and stuff like that, his posts, and he's young, but he a little player, bro. Like he clean, he fresh, like he he a good looking dude. I ain't gonna cap, and 
you remind me of me when I was like 17, you know? I was on my fuckboy shit. <laughs> you feel me? Like really figuring out who I was and just owning myself. I was like, I see a lot of myself in you and you watch me. So it's probably me, it's mutual. Like, don't just think you're watching me and like, it's not possible to, you first of all, don't, you shouldn't want to be like me. Not cause I'm not cool, you feel me? <laughs> but like, we should all want to be ourselves. But like, the fact that, how do I say this? I like, keep losing my train of thought. I'm just so excited. But yeah, y'all shouldn't want to be me, bro. Just see yourself in me. Like, if I could do it, you could do it. It sounds so cheesy, but if the fact that you're on this video right now watching me means that you have that same energy and, you, and spirit in you to do the same thing and better in your version, it's not a competition. You don't have to try to get as muscular as me and eat the same things as me and work out the same way as me and have a relationship like me and all this and all that. Unless something resonates with you, but don't try to copy me to a T. Because I, bro, I have favorite YouTubers I used to watch. And I didn't even realize, now looking back, I used to try to copy them, bro. Like, I'd be like, oh, he's so cool. I want to be like him. Oh, I got to work out as much as him. Oh, I got to eat the same way as him. Oh, I have to, um, well, how does he make his thumbnails? His videos are so much cooler than mine. I want to edit my videos like him. I want to, nah. You can get inspiration for somebody, but don't ever diminish yourself and just erase you to try to replace you with someone else. That's you're not authentic like that bro like let me influence you don't let don't don't want to be me bro like don't want to be me don't want to have my body you feel me like you should want to have your body bro like in your own way like it'll hit 10 times harder bro you think i look good imagine how imagine how you gonna feel when you look in the mirror and you're the way you want to be and it's all you you feel me that's why i can't compare myself to other people either because i'm like I will never look like you. No matter how hard I try, I will never look like you. I will never look like you. You can never look like me. And that's so fine. Let's normalize that. I don't want to look like you. And you should not want to look like me. Let's let's normalize that, okay? But, like, in a good way, though. You feel me? Like, let, I can inspire you. If you're like, man, he got some good skin. I'm, I'm going to take care of my skin. That's fine. If you're like, oh, okay, uh, he be active. I want to get active in my own way. That's fine. But... Just make sure it comes from a good place and you're not being hard on yourself and diminishing yourself because you're perfect, bro. It doesn't matter where you're at in your journey. Like, you're perfect. You're here for a reason. God made you one of one. You are literally a blessing, bro, to so many people, bro. Like, to me, you click on my video, you watch my video, you comment, you engage with me. You're a blessing to me, bro. Like, you give me reasons to wake up. People, not even people, I'm over here. People don't think, nah, but knowing that I have a community, bro. I wake up and I see people comment on my video and they like my video and they watch my video. It makes me feel good. Not even on no like number shit like, yeah, I'm getting views. It's literally like people are tuning into me and I'm helping them and like we're giving, we're feeding into each other, bro. I'm giving you something and you're giving me something. Like, I love y'all, bro. I'm not, I'm not going to do y'all dirty like some influencer, whatever. Like, I'm just here to help y'all, bro, to make y'all laugh, to have a good time, to, for good things, bro. But yeah, I thank y'all so much for watching this video. It's like 12.30. I'm going to go see what I'm going to do. 30-minute um, video. I haven't gave you a 30-minute video in a while. This one came from the heart. Hope y'all appreciate it. And peace out.